Ahoy, level lovers! This be Tom from the Brick Shelf. Hey folks, this is Tom. Welcome back to the Brick Shelf. We're about to take a look at the Pirate Cove, where I've been struggling for inspiration of late. Throw any ideas you have in the comments section along the way. Multiple comments won't annoy me at all. I'll respond to the lot. This video is a walkthrough for fans like me who like to interact with a builder's ideas about what they're creating. If you'd just like a quick flyover view of the Brick Shelf, check out the LEGO World Overviews. There's a whole playlist of them saved on the channel, and I'll put a link in the description below and a card up to help you out. Now let's get into it. Growing up in the early 90s, it was all about LEGO Police and Pirates. I didn't have many pirate sets. This is pretty much it, apart from a couple of people packs. And when I first pulled out my childhood LEGO, went up to my folks' place and grabbed it, the first mock I did was a pirate island centered on this. When I did that pirate island, the sand, because I didn't have any of this tan color sand, was yellow. And I had a little treasure trove in here. I've updated it all, put it on a turntable, a little genie inside, and set it in the middle of this cove. As you do when you rediscover Lego and you've got your own money to spend, I went straight online and found old sets that I missed out on and always had on my wish list. This was the first one. Of course, the Islanders. I actually liked more than the Pirates. But then of course, the big brick bounty. Not sure what it was called back in the day. This was a newer version in the early 2000s, 2010s probably to replace that big brick bounty that I never got. So starting off with two ships, a treasure cave, and a big corner plot of land on the shelf, I figured I'd do a big empty bay with a coast around the edge so that the ships could be the centerpiece. Let me show you quickly now. So you can see on the left there, the shelf's two base plates deep and then a little sliver. That sliver I think is five studs. Since then I've changed it to seven so that none of those pesky pieces fall down the back. I know it's pretty controversial cutting base plates, but we make it what we want. And those were old edges of road plates from when I was a kid, so I wasn't gonna miss them. The tray of tan plates in the middle there is the result of my first adventure to the Lego store. Hadn't been to the Lego store before this, and as you can imagine, my eyes lit up when I saw that pick a brick wall. I've got as many tan plates as I could in a cup and went to town on the border here, trying to link the Wild West that is gonna be on the right there with the Pirate Cove all the way around the corner. After leaving it to sit like this for a while, it occurred to me that this is a massive waste of space. If you've seen my previous video of the Ninjago Valley, you know how much I like to pack into an area over the shelf. So plan number two was to take that big old ship with its massive sails that blocked the view of everything and build a jetty in front of it with a, what would you call it, a peninsula? Coming off that, shrinking the cove but giving space for the pirate ship, maybe a pirate town behind. And then the plan was always to, just like I did in the Jago Valley, raise up the space behind the ship so that you can still see it past the massive structure. Having said that, you can't see a thing past these massive sails. I did switch the sails around. They're actually backwards compared to the way the set was meant to be because the door is where they're facing now. So you get to see that Beautiful pirate symbol, the what's it called, Jolly Roger on the sails. Let me pull this ship out though so I can show you what I'm talking about behind. The ship's been blocking the view for so long that I've actually forgotten half the things I put back here. Some of you might recognize features from the pirate roller coaster that came out not long ago. Obviously not the roller coaster section, but I liked a lot of the mini builds. So I got the set, ship, castle, which was kind of the entrance to the roller coaster. And the turret there. The octopus, the kraken. And if I quickly zoom out back here, this skull tower. Sitting next to, uh, what's his name? King Neptune. The start of the plan, my creative vision, if you will, was to connect this garden at the top of the Ninjago Valley to a precarious cliff top path that led up to the castle. I used these old bridge pieces from when I was a little tacker. Used darker and lighter brown to 
give it some accent, and then heaps of burnt pieces. These burnt pieces in this old light gray came in a big bundle with a bunch of dark old gray. And I started to separate the two so that the dark was Ninjago and the light were the pirates, just to give a bit of contrast. And then piece together, some is light bluish gray, some's old light gray from when I was a kid. I was really just scrambling to use whatever pieces I could. So you can see there's a little window archway there. Can't remember if I put anything inside. Random angled pieces that I'd never use anywhere else arch pieces tried to make a little corner angle out of this cave two arch pieces inside i tried to stay with the same color scheme as the castle above so that if you did have a peek in there it wouldn't look too out of place with random colored bricks still don't know what i'm going to put in that cave any ideas again please comment below because i am struggling for inspiration kept using these angle pieces that i'd never use anywhere else to wrap the ship that was gonna stay in here. It does give a good shape. You can see these placeholders here, these trans clear cheese wedges. I left them, I had them in there in the first place so that I knew what, how much room the ship took up. I've just left them in there because like I keep saying, you can't see anything back there. Even just running through it quickly with you now, I'm rediscovering details that I completely forgotten I'd put back here. Just simple little designs that suggested a precarious path. Some little, I don't know, entrance to a temple. I use the wall as just like a clear cross-section cut, just assuming that there's more back there. This castle here is almost a clean slate. Haven't put any detail in there. I'd cobblestone it, you know, that kind of thing. Put little pirates or maybe even the, uh, I don't know what you call them, Imperial Fleet. All in there, barricading themselves in, stopping the pirates from running amok. I do have built in, you can see the difference in the greys there. I think I'd want to fix that up. There's a method to get up to the top there. I'd probably change the turret still. It's very similar to the way it was in the roller coaster set but i'm just looking for ideas anything you've got that might give me a little spark to get going again very much appreciated the section that really wore me out was this pirate village back here i started playing around with facades it'd definitely be facades that i'd be working with here because it seems like a lot of space but once you put a little market the hustle and bustle in there there's really not going to be much room so I just want shop fronts or building fronts. Didn't really have the pieces to get it to look the right period. I don't know what period that would be, what era. Since then I've done some brick link orders. I think these windows will really help a treat. Started playing around with designs to try and get it to look old timey, but I think that might be a bit modern. Here's an example of the kind of thing I'm picturing. Now you might be asking, why don't you just buy this set, Tom? This set is retired and rare, and in Australia, you'd be lucky to pick it up for a lazy $700. So that's not really an option for me. What I have been considering is going on the Lego website to the bricks and pieces section, where you're supposed to go if you lose a piece for a set or break a piece on your set, and you can just buy every single piece as long as the piece is still being made and still being produced in sets. You can probably recognize the coloring of this blue building in the facade that I'm mocking up. It might just be a go to keep going the way I am and just picking up pieces as I go. These buildings are way too big for the space that I've got, so ordering every piece might be overkill. Whenever I bring up the cove, the first question I always get is whether I'm gonna add Barracuda Bay to it. Set is brilliant, and I might eventually one day, if I move into a bigger space, I actually have two of these sets put aside. I'll probably open one eventually, but I bought them as an investment. I'll wait till they retire. They're worth a bajillion dollars and then I'll flip them. They are huge. They're easily the size of this entire peninsula, castle, dock area. It's not the scale that's gonna fit in this shelf. So I'm looking for something a little more intricate. So in my frustration with the pirate village, 
Ivory and Machuli moved across to give their rivals somewhere better to hang out. I've always wanted a Mayan style temple in my collection. And this one was really fun to build. Inside, as you can imagine, it's a hollow mess with a few Technic beams across to hold it up. And I used a bunch of sand green, of course, from the pick a, brick, pick a brick wall to get it going. I enjoyed researching, getting some ideas from YouTube. And it was basically a conversion from a Ninjago, I think it is, set some little snake shrine so you'll see plenty of pieces of that in here so the final challenge is to marry up the pirates and the islanders with the next district which happens to be the wild west i don't like a hard cut between the themes between the districts as you might remember from ninjago I like it to be a bit organic. I like it to make sense that they're connected. So what I did between the Pirates and the Wild West was set it up so that the Islanders had created a bit of a, I don't know, voodoo barricade to stop the Wild West from getting in. So that's it, crew. The Pirate Cove in all its glory. Remember to hit like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. The bell notification will help with that too. Until then, keep building.